on MMA Inside the Cage, the aftermath of UFC 153. A new project called Fightland, an official preview of Abu Dhabi Warriors, and 12 new finalists for Clip of the Week. MMA Inside the Cage, brought to you by Combat Sports Insurance. Welcome to MMA Inside the Cage. Lots of stuff to get to this week. I'm your host, Cyrus Fees, and I'm joined by the zombie's worst nightmare, Mr. Casey Oxendine. It was the Walking Dead premiere this last weekend, and I good. know you were excited about that. Loved it. But I assume you're being metaphorical when you say this, meaning that MMA Inside the Cage is knocking out all the competition, all this zombie programming <laughs> that's on television. You know what I'm saying? We're chopping off heads. We're going across the world. We're bringing the top promotions from all over the globe. And then also, we're doing the Dirty Dozen each week. We're we see the best knockouts and finishes from across the United States. Certainly not zombies here. Time to get this MMA news flurry started. And how about this UFC 153 card last week in Rio? Seemed like this one was destined to fail with all the injuries, but they did pull it together. The last three fights, Teixeira Maldonado having that Rocky-esque bout for three rounds. Teixeira getting the win. Minotaro Nagara proving Dave Herman wrong about BJJ, getting the armbar victory. And Anderson Silva dropping heavy underdog Stefan Bonner in the first round. I really like the Teixeira fight. I think he is making a push. What was the biggest story? For you. Teixeira and Aguera both look great, but of course Anderson Silva is the talk of the town, man. He is making playtime out of mixed martial arts, taking one of the greatest competitors ever in Stefan Bonner, making him, it's, it's like child's play, man. It, it's, <laughs> it's like it was nothing. And, and truly, I, I'm taking nothing away from Stefan Bonner because people said he looked good. He did look good. But Anderson Silva is great, the greatest ever. And to me, the only logical um, uh, step forward would possibly be in John Jones. That, Gotta to me, make that's the fight. The, yeah. I think the money on the table for that case, he's going be out of control. <laughs> Crazy money. From Brazil to Kokomo, Indiana, where Mark Slater's Coliseum Combat Promotion has been in the news. Apparently, their most used venue, the Ivy Tech Kokomo Event Center, has now said they are not going to let them back in the building. Mark Slater have to move his promotion out of the city. We love these guys. They give us great highlights. You've promoted a lot of events yourself. You've been down this road mm -hmm. before. Some people just don't want your money. And that's, Isn't that crazy? That's the bottom line. You know, I, I, we promoted the very first show in the state of Tennessee ever. And we, we went there. I, I assume the powers of B didn't read over their contract when we signed it. They had some issues, and they tried to kind of pull the plug on me at the last minute. Of course, we pushed on through and insisted there we did have a contract, but after it was all said and done, even though we made ourselves money and a lot of money for the venue, they opted to, to not have us back and we, we were on, a, on a, a push to find something else. But you know, the thing about a promoter is is we are like cockroaches, brother, in that <laughs> <laughs> we, we are very resilient. We will find a way to make the show go on and, and that's what I did and I'm sure this is the case. Same thing too. with Mark Slater. You know he's going to bounce back. Finally, Bellator 76 last weekend. Mm -hmm. We're going to hit on that real quick. Eddie Alvarez yeah. having the big performance performance, a big KO. What do you think of that? You think it's going to be UFC? I think maybe World Series of Fighting might try to sneak in there or maybe he goes back to Bellator. That'd Possible? be something special if World Series of Fighting can pick him up but I think that Eddie Alvarez right now is, is really needing branding. He's one of the greatest fighters in the world, no doubt. He's been all over the world. He competes at a very very high level but hardly anybody really knows him. Yeah. There, there are mid-level guys in the UFC that, that are much, much more famous than Eddie Alvarez. I think that the branding of the UFC might take him to that next peer. It's going to be hard to turn that down. And again, of course, the Metamorphosis grappling event that they just had was fantastic. Of course, you had some big names there. Dean Lister, you had Hiram Gracie taking on Andre Galveo. That was huge. Hodger Gracie was in the building. A lot of Gracies in the building, but the most important Gracie at this one was Kron Gracie, who got a big win. Talk about Kron that. Kron made a huge showing, and this was right down his alley. The, the Worlds were just prior to it. Uh, of course, the Worlds, uh, BJJ Worlds, are based around point system, yeah. uh, traditional style. This Metamorphosis was different. It was based around submission only. Only. It was a 20-minute time limit. It went to a draw. If there was no submission, it went to a draw. But that wasn't the case for Kron. Kron is all about the submission. He is really revolutionizing the sport of BJJ right now by snagging those arm bars and, and the submissions like he has. And it's making it much, much more popular. And, and really, he had a lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, some big shoes to fill with his father, Hicks and Gracie, yeah. who's considered the greatest mat legend of all time. Now, we are going to talk about Hicks and Gracie in the next round. Last week's Clip of the Week competition may have been the best one yet. Some of the best finishes from all over the country. Country, but only one can take home the win and the prize pack that winner is Servando Almarez from Cage Combat with that lightning quick KO. The cameraman couldn't even get to it quick enough. It was so fast. Check out TXMMA.com for more from Mike Columbus, Texas MMA, and of course Cage Combat.
Well, last week was great, but this one just might outdo it. What's in it for him on the prize package? Case? Well, as always, Elevation Training Mass 2.0 is up for grabs. Shaker Cup pre-workout formula from Gamma Labs, and of course, apparel from Vamp, Five Gear Crucifix, and Hunter MMA. We're going to take a look at Hicks and Gracie's newest endeavor and a cool new project from Vice TV's Matt Ruskin. But first, it's your first four finalists for Clip of the Week. <laughs> Serious, goes to the body, goes to the head. Now this comes down. Tell where you're in trouble. Fighters, promoters, fans, get hooked up. Send us your best knockouts and submissions by going to MMAinsidethecagetv.com and clicking Get On Air. In the very dangerous sport of mixed martial arts, one company has your back. Combat Sports Insurance is the Southeast's newest entity, insuring events, promoters, and fighters as well. Owner Jeremy Augusta, an area leader in insurance for the past decade and current MMA fighter for Team Oxendine, is focused on bringing the best coverage to your event and your fighters. Combat Sports Insurance, call today at 423-571-2519 or visit CombatSportsInsurance.com. The most spectacular event is coming to Abu Dhabi. Be part of the premier fight sport event in Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi Warriors. MMA Inside the Cage, brought to you by Combat Sports Insurance. Welcome back. Now, there are always new promotions and new takes on the sport, but it's a big deal when Hickson Gracie is the one behind it. Now, the man who some consider to be the best of all time is introducing Mestre do Combat or Master of Combat in Portuguese. Pride style rounds, 10 minute first round, five minute second round. No being saved by the bell, no judges for decisions. In fact, Hickson, the referee, and the fans in attendance will decide the winner. You think this kind of judging will work? I took, Hickson's taking some hits on that. I watched, uh, I watched some of the forum. And, and I was reading on it, but this is the way it is. Hickson, and, and you saw it in Kron, in his teaching of Kron, he's all about the finish, and mm -hmm. that's what he wants to see. And basically what he's saying is, is that the judging really doesn't matter. It's not about the judging, it's about getting our finishing fights. It's being aggressive. And at the end of it, if the fan, if the referee, and if Hickson views that fight and he says he thinks you won, then you're going to win. And, and it's it's like this. He, he, it's going to be judged like that. You're going to get the feel of that energy. And if you don't like that judging, then you better finish the fight. Yeah. Bottom well, line. Seriously, I think it's going to be awesome. Master Edo Combat, look out for it. The first round of the first show is going to be set for November. And we will definitely be keeping an eye on that and definitely trying to bring you the video right here on MMA Inside the Cage. Now, something else that is easy on the eyes is this new project from Vice TV. And, of course, you know Matt Ruskin, very heavily involved in that one. Mm -hmm. It's a view inside the lives of some of the top gyms, top five and best coaches in the sport today, including guys like Mike Winklejohn, Travis Happa Brown, John Jones. They went up to TriStar, a lot of big gyms. It's called Fightland. Now let's check out the official trailer right now so you can take a peek.
absolutely love the production on this. That's something I definitely appreciate. Now, if it's anything like the trailer, I think Vice TV has really struck gold with this one. They're doing a whole lot of stuff right now, but this one, it, it, it's it's a true uh, inside the heart of these fighters. Matt Ruskin, a good friend of mine, he, he's heavily involved. Uh, this is a guy that's, that's trained at Henzo's for a lot of years. He's fought for Henzo on his fight team. Uh, he's down in, in Brooklyn at Daniel Gracie's Academy yeah. a whole lot, and he's a guy that really knows how to touch the heart and soul of mixed martial arts. So you're seeing the guys like Rory McDonald and, and like, the, like you said, the guys at TriStar and Mike Winklejohn and, and John Jones is even in there. And, and, and they're touching base with all these guys as they live and the ups and downs and the lives. And I think it's going to be a hit big time. It's fantastic. Fightland.com for more information on that one. I cannot wait to see the finished product. An official preview for Abu Dhabi Warriors is coming up next round. But first, it's four more finalists for Clip of the Week. <laughs> Great hips, look at Lou. Secure an arm bar, and he does have an arm bar. He looks like he wants good. a top. We have a top. Fighters, promoters, fans, get hooked up. Send us your best knockouts and submissions by going to MMAinsidethecagetv.com and clicking Get On Air. Coming soon. A mixed martial arts spectacle, the like of which the Middle East has never seen. The Abu Dhabi Warriors are coming. There will be knockouts, submissions, and more bone crushing than you can handle. Buckle up, funsters. Don't blink. Abu Dhabi Warriors 1 comes to you live from the Adnec Exhibition Center on November 2nd at 7 p.m. local time. Be there. I think for my son, he could have collapsed many times. I'm looking to be a young champion. I feel like I'm ready for the top. If he says he's going to be the middleweight champ, I believe him. You know, very directed with his goals. Very good family guy, very serious. My daughter is my biggest fan, and uh, no one could argue with that. You know, I'm betting on Chris, 100%. I just don't see anyone stopping him. I'm confident. I know I can beat him, and I just want the shot now. MMA Inside the Cage, brought to you by Combat Sports Insurance. Once third round time, time to impress the judges. Cyrus Fees, Casey Eisenstein. It's only two weeks away from the historic card Abu Dhabi Warriors on Friday, November 2nd. You can watch that live on WFCTV.com. Now, we've looked at a few of the big fighters on the card. Of course, Jose Pele Landy, Kurt Kinzer. But let's really look at this one. Nine big fights on the card. Some fights to really look out for. Kazunori Yokota taking on Vadim Kaitalov. This fight's going to be great. Both guys impressive records, a lot of wins, and both are on three fight winning streaks. Can't wait to see this one. What has really interested me is the fact that you've got one guy who is a Sengoku dream legend over mm -hmm. here in Japan, and you've got another guy who is an M1 global star. So when these two clash, you're going to see a huge contrast of styles, and I think it's going to be fireworks. It's just like you say that. 10 different countries are being represented on this card. I think that's impressive. You got guys from different promotions battling, and we've been wanting to see that forever. Benjamin Brinson taking on Caleb Dicer John, the big German taking on the guy from the USA, Dicer John, that is just ripped to shreds. He just got back on the winning track, taking on the undefeated Brinson. Who do you like in this one? Well, Dicer John is, is a tough, tough dude, no doubt, but I just have to go with Brinson, man. This guy is, he's proven that he can do it any way you want to go. He's got rear naked chokes, he's got TKOs, he's got heel hooks. He's proved that he he can go the distance. I agree. And I just think he's going to be on a roll, and he's going to have uh, Dicer John's number in this fight. Well, there we go. I can't wait to see that fight. Now, we talked about Pele Landy. We talked about Kirk Kinzer. But what about this main event? This one's going to be fireworks. Heavyweight clashes. Maro Parag takes on Konstantin Gluov. 60 fights, 40 finishes between the two of them. Parag coming off his win over Bob Sapp. Gluov coming off the loss to Alexander Emelianenko just last month. What's going to be the story with this fight? How's it going to go down? I can't wait to see this. These guys are monsters, aren't they? Yes. Big bombs. Uh, you're talking about 
two guys who stay extremely active in the sport. And it reminds me of the K1 days where you'll have guys that will, will t take some wins, take a loss here and there, and then the next thing you know, they, they win the Grand Prix. It's yeah. because, because the competition at heavyweight is so dangerous, it's such big bombs, and, and anything can happen. These guys are going to put on a show, and there is a reason it's the main event down in Abu Dhabi. And I am going to be there. I can't wait to call that fight. Just a rich tradition of grappling, and you have to figure that they will pull up all the stops here on this promotion. Abu Dhabi Warriors, like I said, they have, you know, the big Abu Dhabi with the grappling, mm -hmm. the jiu-jitsu. You know, with MMA, they're going to do it real big. They're never going to do anything bad down in Abu Dhabi. Like you said, the grappling world champions uh, championship is, is synonymous with the word Abu Dhabi. If you say that I'm going to go and I'm going to be the pinnacle of submission grappling, you say, I'm going to Abu Dhabi. Yep. From mixed martial arts, that's their goal right now. Anything that they do, and they've got the, the funds to back it up, and they've got the resources, and man, I think it's going to be fabulous. No doubt about it. It's AbuDhabiWarriors.com for more information on this historic card going out Friday, November 2nd, live online on WFCTV.com. Your main event features one of the main eventers of the night, Maro Parak. Let's see what the big heavyweight can do in your main event of the week. <laughs>
Chega a conta. Mara! Fighters, promoters, fans, get hooked up. Send us your best knockouts and submissions by going to MMAinsidethecagetv.com and clicking Get On Air. Inside the Cage, brought to you by Combat Sports Insurance. Well, it's just about time to close it out, but before we do, your last four finalists for Clip of the Week. Very aggressive. So he is right now, he is pushing the pace a little bit, but, you know, Burton has almost landed some of the biggest shots, so there we go. There's two oh. drops, right? Wow. Big shots. The battering from Schilling's kicks. Wee. Oh, oh, nice one. Fighters taking a big oh, a shot big to the head by Thomas. Thomas drops it. Now that makes a dirty, nasty dozen. So let's take a look at all of them, one through twelve. Body goes the head. Now this comes down. I'll tell you. He does have an arm bar. Yeah, it looks like Pretty he wants good. a tap. We have a tap. And it's some of the biggest shots, so there we go. There's two drops. Right. Wow. Battering from chilling sticks. We get out. fighters taking a big. Now go straight to MMAinsidetheCageTV.com and cast your vote as one of these clips will take home that monster prize package from Training Mask, Gamma Labs, BAMP, Five Gear Crucifix, and Hunter MMA. It's a lot of prizes that right is. there. Now check us out on Facebook, follow us at MMAITC, and subscribe to our official YouTube page for exclusive content. I'm Cyrus Feast. I'm Casey Oxendine. And we'll see you next week Inside, Inside the, the Cage. cage.